depression and dealing with those internal battles is normal. Um, sadly, mm-hmm. that is, that's just the truth of the human yeah. experience that we, we tend to go through. Um, now my experience in particular, um, I dealt with post-college depression where after I graduated, I thought I was on top of the world and Mm -hmm. then it all just kind of came crashing down on me. And I realized, oh, I actually have no idea what path I should be taking. Um, and there's just, as you're, as you grow, it, it doesn't matter if you're in your teens, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, you are continuously developing and growing more and more each and every day. And Mm -hmm. In that process, it's really, really important to... I'm Andre, and this is the Speak Your Life podcast, where we talk about everything as it relates to education, careers, values, mentors, and anything to do with purpose. We do this one impactful conversation at a time, whether it's solo dolo with yours truly or our amazing guests to share stories, industry insights, encouraging words, and calls to action that can help you get closer to your why. Become a part of the Speak Your Life community by subscribing today to the podcast and following us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Speak Your L-Y-F-E because life without your why is meaningless. Now, (laughs) man, that would have been a disaster. Okay. Good thing you noticed that right at this moment rather than, you know, an hour into it. (laughs) Yeah, I was like, something's off. (laughs) <laughs> all right <laughs> okay let me start <laughs> today's special guest is a georgia state alumnus with a degree in media entrepreneurship she is now a host of convert convert kid a platform that helps creators earn a living in email marketing and a founder of your beauty in the making an organization that helps to uh that really helps people to plug in and find their purpose and start their own business venture from that purpose uh so please welcome angel johnson Hello, super happy to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, guys, she's feeling a little under the weather right now, so that's why we don't have the video, but her voice is still amazing, and uh, we can still hear it. So, uh, anyways, uh, so how how is your day going so far, other than just, I don't know, you said you're feeling a little under the weather, but how's everything else, though? <laughs> Yeah, I'm feeling good. Yep. Outside of me, just kind of feeling a little off this morning. Uh, still yeah. feeling good, still mentally trying to be up and at it and just blessed to be alive and well. Uh, yeah, that's good to hear. That is good to hear. So basically, uh, how we met guys is uh, she she's actually the daughter of my trainer, my personal trainer. And so uh, that's that's how that happened. And uh, so it's, it's great to connect here. And so, uh, Angel, you ready to speak your life? Yes, let's do it. Let's dive All in. Right. All right, let's dive right in. So walk us through that moment. Uh, Take us, you know, through that journey from, uh, because like here in this podcast, we like to talk about the two most important things um, in in a person's life and it's knowing the day they were born and and knowing why. So walk us through that journey from uh, the day you were born and to knowing why. And you can, you know, say a year, you can say, you know, what was, you know, popping, what was pop culture if, if you don't feel comfortable saying the year that you were born and all that stuff. Yeah, so uh, I was born in 1996. I was right at the cutoff of uh, being considered a millennial. So (laughs) definitely grew up in the era of Rugrats, uh, Fresh Prince Mm -hmm. of Bel-Air when that was running. Um, I was I was a major, you know, when the early 2000s hit, I was a major uh, Disney Channel fan, not current Disney, but old Mm -hmm. school Disney with That's So Raven and all Mm -hmm. those good shows. Yeah, yeah, proud family. Uh-huh. Oh, those were the best. I really miss those times. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I just I I grew up in that era and it's it's funny cuz when I think back on it now, it's really crazy to be a witness to how much things have changed because mm-hmm. you know when you when you have talks with, with your parents when you're kids and they're like, "Oh, yeah, I remember we used to wear hair like this. We used to wear these kind of clothes." Mm-hmm. And as a kid, you're like, "Okay, like that's weird. I don't like I don't know why you guys were wearing that." But yeah, now yeah. that I'm older, I look back and I'm like, why was I wearing that? You know, back in mm. my generation. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's it's just very interesting. So, um, yep, uh, definitely a 90s baby and proud to be one. That's right. That's right. Same here. I'm 94. So not too far off. But uh, <laughs> but yeah. So. So, yeah, if you could walk us through that journey from uh, the, knowing the day you were born into like, you know, kind of like ups and downs to to getting to that moment of where you you realize okay now i know why i was put on the surf to do this yeah definitely sure 
Um, so I wouldn't say that it was one moment in particular. I feel like it's a part of human nature to have multiple of those moments. Mm -hmm. You just never really realize what's truthful versus what's not. Because at one point I was so sure that I was put on this earth to do music. I wanted to be in the music industry. I wanted to inspire and influence uh, through my artistic abilities. And I was mm -hmm. just so positive that that was my calling. Um, but you know, once you chase after a specific journey and something within your soul just doesn't sit right. And you recognize that there's a shift, there's an internal shift that's taking place and redirecting you elsewhere. Um, and that's, that's where that redirect brings you to another moment of saying, oh, this is what I'm supposed to do. This is mm -hmm. why I was put on this earth. So that would lead to a second moment and another after that until the older you get, the more you mature in wisdom, the more experiences you have and you realize what you like, what you don't like, what you're good at, um, what brings you joy, where your passion mm. derives from. That's when you realize, okay, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm. And um, currently right now, I feel in my heart and know that my calling has everything to do with helping people um, mentally, spiritually, physically, I just want to be in the middle of the mess. You know, everybody's mm -hmm. lives is messy in some way. And I just feel a calling to be in, a, in the middle of that mess. Um, and honestly, because I love to be transparent and authentic, I'm, I'm currently in that process of building that because mm -hmm. who knows where God is going to bring me next. There might be another redirect. Um, yeah. But I do know that that base, that foundation of what I'm supposed to do here on this earth really comes from that place of being a living walking testimony and being a vessel okay great great and and so far could you explain how that's manifested in what way specifically yeah um so right now it's manifested in ways where i've been able to first work on myself you know mm -hmm. if i if i'm wanting to help other people i need to help myself first so I first manifested into the self-development phase, which that, that journey is really never ending. Um, yeah. But there was a part of my life a couple of years ago where I really started to take that seriously, where I, I knew that I wanted to thrive as an individual. And if I wanted to thrive and if I wanted to help other people thrive and reach their potential, I had to learn how to reach mine. Um, mm -hmm. So I did a lot of internal development first, and that took time and effort and energy and I mean, in that process, I've just learned so much about myself from what childhood trauma I was still battling, what I needed to let go of, what I was still dealing with, uh, circumstances at that time and how I needed to heal. Um, and that from there, that manifested into, okay, now, now I have the power and the experiences to really help people in the ways that I felt like God was calling me to help them in. Um, so from there, that manifested into entrepreneurship and starting my own business, um, really, really wanting to help people currently use their voices in the online space. Um, so build an online presence, make sure that they're executing on their passions to other people that could uh, hear from them in a positive way. Um, so right now that's going really, really well. And um, futuristically speaking, I'm going to be transforming that more into a uh, mental development and physical development piece to it on top of the business development that I'm currently doing with my students. Um, so it's all definitely, it's a manifestation in the works, right? Uh, just constantly flourishing, constantly building and um, yeah, just becoming more and more the woman that I feel called to become. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so it's, it's obviously manifested pretty well so far with uh, you, you know, starting a business. Um, and, uh, and so what, what was it that, I don't know, what, what was behind or what was the inspiration behind your beauty in the making? Yeah. Um, so what's funny is that name came from the title of an EP that I was supposed to release back when I was in the music industry mm -hmm. and beauty in the making was supposed to be a storybook of my life and how I was constantly in the making. I wasn't there yet, but yeah. living and breathing and um, being happy and finding joy that was all in the making through the relationships I experienced and the the stories I um, faced, uh, obstacles I overcame. So it was just supposed to be this 
big unfolded journey called Beauty in the Making. Mm -hmm. And since leaving the industry, that title has always stuck with me. I always still wanted to do something with that. Um, so I ended up turning that into a business, Beauty in the Making, where I'm going to be um, helping other people doing that same thing, unfolding their lives, finding the joy. Um, mm -hmm. They're constantly in the making, in the development of becoming their higher selves. Um, so that's where the inspiration really came from. And I, I don't think I'll ever let go of that name because sometimes I no. think about uh, rebranding and what that could look like. But I think mm -hmm. even if I do decide to rebrand, that name is always going to be a part of uh, my business, whether it turns into a nonprofit, a side hustle, anything like that. So yeah, yeah. major passion. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, you talk about making and, uh, and, and, and just like, I remember you making a cover of, uh, best part with her and, uh, Daniel Caesar. I saw that on YouTube. That was pretty cool. I was like, wow, I didn't know that she could sing. That's really, <laughs> really, <laughs> that was really good. Actually. I was Thank like, you. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I, I, a lot of people come across that video and they're like, Oh, I didn't know you could sing. And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not because I'm trying to keep it hidden. It's just more yeah. so I'm, I'm so focused on this entrepreneurial journey right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, I truly believe that when the time is right, God will bring back music into my path when mm -hmm. he sees it fit. Um, but right yep. now I'm just, he's just completely brought something else my way. And I've been focused on building that and proud to do it. Sure. Yeah. And there's, I think, you know, God gives us, I mean, sometimes he gives people, you know, one talent, he gives other people five, 10. And you, you've heard that story in the Bible that, you know, everybody has different talents and some of them, some people have more than others. And it's really not about, um, at the end of the day, it's not about how many you have. It's about how you use the ones that you do have, or you may have yeah. one. And Absolutely. so it's, it's, it's great to hear that you're still, even though you kind of put that off to the side, at the moment that you still are, you know, you've taken time to cultivate that, that gift and you might, you know, come back to that later and, and you're focusing on another gift that you have and that's helping people with your business, helping people, uh, you know, mentally, spiritually, like you said before. And so that's, that's really great that you're, you're, you're cultivating, you're, you're constantly crafting those gifts that you have and you're not putting them to waste. So yes. um, what would you say a typical day like in your business, you know, with the blogs, the master classes, the consultations, et cetera, what does that look like? Yeah. Um, so each day is different. And mm -hmm. in my situation currently here in 2020, going into 2021, I am running a full on business. I've monetized it. I've built it from the ground up. Uh, but at the same time, I'm still working full time being a host and educator and webinar producer with a company helping their customers build their businesses too. So mm -hmm. I kind of have two lanes going here. Um, both I'm passionate about, both I love. So each day is different. Um, each day could be a variety of producing and hosting webinars, teaching people how to build their businesses, and then transitioning into client work. Um, other days are more so focused on content creation, where I'm building out educational materials. I'm building out uh, lead magnets. I'm building out the next workbook that I want to give to my clients, building coaching mm -hmm. programs and packages. Um, so it definitely, it's, it's a variety of different things on a day-to-day -day basis, but, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's what keeps it exciting is that not every single day is the same, even though you mm -hmm. might have a repetition because you're, you know, you're building and helping those same people. Um, each day is different. Um, and I think that's all that's left up to the person. Um, do you want every day to be this, to be the exact same? Do you want to switch it up, uh, based off of what brings you joy, what makes you happy, um, what mm -hmm. keeps you on track just so that you can build up what you're trying to build? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love it. it. It, it reminds me of, um, this, this concept I, I'm in the process of, uh, I'm, I guess you could say manifest into a book right now. And, um, and it's really, like how sometimes people don't realize, you know, ways or means to get to their purpose. And for me, I'll say for, I can only speak for myself and that. And I would say what you, you said was, you know, a sense of variety, not, not having the same thing every single day. And that's what I like to call, you know, it's part of the things, uh, what I like to call my faves, my freedom, my autonomy, and my variety. And that's what mm -hmm. those values right there, those non-negotiable values, especially that last one, it's kind of what led me out of 
uh, leading, you know, leaving my old job and, and finding purpose after that and taking that chance on myself. And, um, and it sounds like you're, you know, you're doing the same this. I think there's something to it where people who, uh, people who are in the entrepreneurial spirit, I guess, are looking usually for a sense of variety. There's, n there's never a same day. There's never like a day that seems to copy the other. There's, there's always something new going on. And, but at the same time, there's repetition at the same time. So that's, that's really, that's really, I guess, um, it's settling to hear that in the sense of like, um, we share that, uh, I guess, I guess you say the same feeling. It's a, it's a shared feeling amongst a lot of entrepreneurs. But yes. um, yep. But anyways, I know that you you lived a little bit in many. Was it Minneapolis or St. Paul or what part of Minnesota? I was, was it? I, yep, I was born and raised in the Twin Cities in uh, Minnesota. Okay, yeah, that's right, that's right. So, how is it different? Like coming down here to Atlanta, it's like totally different. People from the south, you know, people from the south are just like really nice saying hi and they don't even know you like how does that feel is it was it weird was it how was that feeling <laughs> um yeah it was definitely it was a complete 180 i mean it was mm -hmm. minnesota and atlanta are completely different um uh, both yeah. in beautiful yeah. ways um definitely. but actually i did not find southern hospitality down here and i really mm. still don't i i i feel like Minnesota is much more friendlier <laughs> than mm -hmm. the South. So I wasn't greeted mm -hmm. where people were coming up to me saying hi. I mean, of course you get, you know, the kind people every now and then in every state, but um, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't, ex I didn't experience that Southern hospitality that I was expecting. Um, yeah. But I, I have experienced Southern hospitality in other Southern states, but Atlanta, Georgia is it's its yeah. own little world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like um, to call it New York to the South because it's, it's a lot different from like when you go outside the big city like Savannah and places like that. Yeah, it's that's that's exactly it. Yeah, because I've I visited Savannah and everyone was super nice. But yeah, Atlanta's its own little world. Mm -hmm. But um, it was it was a journey that really changed me in an amount immense amount of necessary ways. Um, mm -hmm. Growing up in Minnesota, I loved where I was. I love all of my family out there, but Minnesota isn't a very diverse state. Um, and coming to Atlanta, I was able to experience more of my own culture. So Minnesota, I, for those of you who don't know, I'm biracial, I'm half black, half white. Um, and it wasn't until I came to Atlanta that I really got to know my own roots. Um, a lot of my uh, black side of the family lives here. I was able to get closer with them. Um, and just not even aside from that, I was able to understand the culture. I was able to understand the historical roots that are down here uh, mm -hmm. that date all the way back from slavery. And I think just being in the midst of it and being in the midst of a different culture and different ways of thinking really helps you to understand not just yourself as a person, but who you're wanting to be, how you're wanting uh, people to perceive you, how you're wanting to be a helping hand um, and the mark that you wanna make in this world. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I will vouch to this day that moving from Minnesota to Atlanta is one of the most monumental moments of my entire life because it really did change me in ways that I needed to be changed. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, it was, it was a beautiful journey at that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I remember going to uh, the Twin Cities. It was like, man, it was like 20, 2012. And um, I loved everything about that city, except for the the freaking winters. I, I hated the winters. I cannot stand like a place where it's like, it can get to be like negative 20 degrees. So <laughs> yeah, everything that's pretty about awful. that city was amazing. Like maybe Minnesota as a state wasn't diverse, but I saw a lot of diversity in the city. And yep, yep. Um, a lot of people from... Um, like Africa, you know, Middle East and all, all kinds of places. And, um, and just, you know, uh, lots, lots of great places to shop, you know, obviously the mall of America is huge there. Um, it's just a lot going on. So it's, it's actually a place where I actually consider living at one point in my life, but it's that winter that man, that's, that's what got me. I, I couldn't do it. Oh, yeah. I, no, do I it. get it. I get it. Those <laughs> winters are brutal. Um, I do not miss those at all. I remember as a kid 
standing outside waiting for the bus stop and my hair yeah. would just freeze. Like <laughs> if you, you could not take showers in the morning in Minnesota, if, especially mm. if you were walking outside and it was negative, you know, 15 degrees because your hair would definitely freeze. It would be white. You'd have to yeah. wait for it to melt. So <laughs> yeah, I remember those days, but yeah, Minnesota, um, as a state from the outside, looking in as a state, um, it, it doesn't seem very diverse, but in the cities, mm -hmm. you will find diversity. You'll find a variety of different people. And it really is up and coming when it comes to the startup businesses and mm -hmm. um, the restaurants, the foods. I mean, it's, it's a great place. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think, I think my heart right now is so dedicated towards exploring outside of where I was born and raised because I just have a passion for um, diving into different cultures, understanding different ways of living, um, both in this, in the United States and out, out of the country. Mm -hmm. Um, so it'll, I think it'll be a little while before I even consider possibly moving back to Minnesota. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a great place, but it's, I would, I would, I like to call it like the hidden gem of America because, you know, a lot of times people overlook it, they sleep on it. They think of, you know, Los Angeles, New York, you know, all the big, you know, places, Atlanta, it's, it's, it's a gravitational pull, uh, for young professionals. I feel like, um, out, you know, all those other places I just listed, but when it comes to, uh, Minneapolis, it's it's the hidden gem that people just sleep on, and I I really think there's a lot, there's a lot to that city that people need to you know give it a try. So yeah, um, absolutely, yeah. I agree. Yeah. The BBC reports that U.S. workers' online studies said that nearly 70% agree public speaking skills are critical for success at work. Maybe you are a student looking to become a prime candidate for that internship or might I say full-time position. Or maybe you have already been in the job market for some time now and you just want to stand out amongst your coworkers looking to get that raise you feel like you've been passed up for for too long now. Go to speakyourlife.com slash private dash lessons. That's speakyourlife.com slash private dash lessons again that's speak your lyfe dot com slash private dash lessons to become a better communicator tomorrow by signing up today but um but yeah so i remember um so you know you moved from minnesota you came down here to atlanta you went to georgia state and I, I remember reading one of your blog posts and you were talking about graduating from college and just kind of going through depression, taking you know time to uh, evaluate societal norms and, and like just your college experience, going through their four years, getting a job and all the typical, you know, things that you, 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 you noticed that and you just wanted to, I don't know, break away from that and, and kind of reshape that paradigm reshape that thinking of what it's supposed to be and just i guess i guess it seemed like you were having like this kind of internal battle uh with yourself to try to find your own path and forge your own path and uh what would you say to i guess how could you encourage people who were you know contemplating their life and and just having maybe having their internal struggles or internal battles especially in this uh this a new era this you know this year 2020 there, there's no such thing as normalcy anymore so um right. how could you speak on that or how, how could you encourage people who might be going through that yeah that's a great question um so depression and dealing with those internal battles is normal um sadly mm -hmm. that is that's just the truth of the human yeah. experience that we we tend to go through um, now my experience in particular, um, I dealt with post-college depression where after I graduated, I thought I was on top of the world and mm -hmm. then it all just kind of came crashing down on me. And I realized, oh, I actually have no idea what path I should be taking. Um, and there's just, as you're, as you grow, it, it doesn't matter if you're in your teens, twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, sixties, you are continuously developing and growing more and more each and every day. And mm -hmm. In that process, it's really, really important to recognize if you're starting to face any kind of depression or internal battle. Um, I think we get into the habit of ignoring it and just shoving mm. it to the side and just being like, okay, well, you know, it's, I just have a bad day or this is going on or this is fine. And we just mm. shove it to the side. Um, 
but in actuality, it's something that needs to be faced. And I feel like the only way that you're going to be able to face it in a healthy way where there's a solution on the other side is if you Mm -hmm. tackle the deeply rooted problem. Mm. Um, there might feel like there's a surface level problem and that's the base as to why you're, you might be feeling depressed or going through what you're going through. But in actuality, there's something deeply rooted that's causing it to enhance that much further. So Mm. you have to pull up those roots. If if you want to get that out, if you want to heal successfully and efficiently, you have to pull from those roots. Um, so for me, when I was battling with that and I was realizing, okay, I need to dig deeper. I need to understand what is tugging at me. What is deeply rooted inside that's causing me to feel this immense amount of, of pain. Um, uh, so emotional pain, mental pain, spiritual pain. Mm -hmm. So when I started diving into that, I was, I was kind of digging up these childhood traumas and, Uh, childhood insecurities and past experiences that I never thought bothered me, but Mm. they actually did. And they caused me to, they, they affected my future. They affected the way that I would feel react or respond to certain things. They were triggers. Um, Mm. So I really had to dive deep, find those triggers, find those, those roots and dig them up from, uh, dig them from the ground up and really start really start the healing process. Um, and that, that process takes time. It's not going to be, uh, by a flip of the flip of the switch. It'll take time to heal. It'll take time to truly start to flourish more into who you're supposed to be and leave behind who you were. Um, Mm -hmm. so that, that, that definitely takes time. So I, I would just advise anyone who might be experiencing that to find your triggers, find what's deeply rooted, And then from there, start the healing process and be patient through it all. Mm -hmm. That's, that's great. And, um, what were some, I don't know, what were were some ways that you were able to get through that? Was it like counseling? Was it exercise? Was it meditation? A combination of those things? Yeah. Um, I definitely would say a combination of those things. I, I focused a lot. I focused heavily on uh, physical activity exercise and using that as a healthy outlet. Um, mm. I stopped bad habits. Uh, at, at, at one point I was smoking a lot. I was, uh, I wanted to drink every weekend. Yeah. Um, and at the time it was just, Oh yeah, I just want to have fun. Mm. But in actuality, I was looking for an escape, a temporary escape. And that, will never lead down a healthy road. Um, so I had to tell myself, okay, I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to start doing this. I'm going to drop bad habits and I'm going to start collecting healthy ones. Um, Mm -hmm. so I started exercising a lot. I started meditating. I started reading the Bible. I started intentionally praying. And when I say that, I'm, I don't mean just saying uh, your basic, um, prayer that, you know, by heart. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm talking about an intentional prayer where you're legitimately talking to God as if he's he's your best friend and you're confessing, you're laying out uh, everything you're worried about, everything that you're fearful of, you're being truthful and honest and just sharing those moments more with God. Um, So I had open, honest, intentional prayers, meditated, worked out, read the Bible. I journaled a ton. Mm -hmm. Um, I found journaling really healing because uh, in that process, I was able to write out my thoughts rather than keep them bottled up inside. Um, yeah. And then I would go back and read my journal entries just so that I could reflect um, and have those moments of uh, past, like appreciating my past and recognizing what was from my past and what's in my current situation that is not sitting right with me um, so that I, I was pinpointing the right things. So yeah, it was, it was a ton, a ton of that. Um, definitely every morning and every night I was doing one or many of those things. Yeah, that's, that's really awesome. I think that sometimes, you know, people, you know, whether they, I guess, go to the church or whatever like that, I think sometimes people get caught up in, I guess, monotony and and just going through the motions and people don't really take the time to really be very intentional and about what they're saying or what they're singing uh, to God or, uh, you know, whatever somebody is, uh, you know, whether they're, you know, worshiping uh, another, um, worshiping in another religious practice or anything like that. I think sometimes really 
people, it takes hard times. It takes dark times for people to really channel that intentionality and focus it and really take your faith seriously, take your spirituality seriously. Um, because you realize that, you know, escapism is not working. Um, all the things, you know, maybe partying, whatever, all those things that you tried, you know, it's just not working. And mm -hmm. you, you really have to, you know, get, get plugged in, get serious about that. And um, that, it's really, it's really great that you found a healthy outlet to kind of express yourself through journaling, like you said, and, and exercise and, and, and praying and yeah. intentionally praying. It's, it's not just about saying a bunch of words that, you know, that sound really holy, but actually being really serious and like, I don't know, sometimes it leads you to tears. Sometimes it leads you to all these kind of range of emotions. Um, and, and, and it's not to, it's not, it's not, an, it's, when I say a range of emotions, I don't mean like emotionality in the sense of like, just trying to express yourself to make yourself seem holy in front of others. But just in the, you know, behind closed doors, just you and God. And um, I, I really, you know, I really appreciate, you know, you're sharing that because that's, that's something that people, I think sometimes they, they know they want to talk to God or they, they know they want to get more serious or, and they just, I don't know, for whatever reason, they're putting it off and they think yeah. they have tomorrow. They think they, they can do it next week. But I think, Man, 2020s, if it's anything that's taught us, it's, it's that we don't know <laughs> if we have tomorrow. We don't know yeah. if um, the next hour is going to be uh, something where we can experience. Uh, so it's, it's good that we take every moment and, and we become intentional with that. So, yeah, that's that's really, really great to hear. And, um, and when, when it comes to pursuing your purpose, there's a lot of things I feel like, you know, things that can hold us back ourselves, um, uh, that can, you know, hold us back. What do you feel like are some ways that, you know, people may allow other people to hold them back from pursuing their purpose? Repeat that question one more time. Yeah. So there's different, you know, different things. Uh, there's different things that, you know, that can hold people back from uh, pursuing their purpose. And uh, whether that's, you know, going through, I, I guess, maybe going through something in their life or um, uh, things that uh, happen unexpectedly. Um, and then there's people, you know, there's things, there's events that happen, and there's people that, that hold them back from, uh, well, they allow to hold them back from uh, kind of going forth into their purpose. How do you, or what ways do you uh, or have, maybe have you experienced where people have tried to hold you back from getting to your purpose? Got you. Yeah. Great question. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say I've had an experience where people were holding me back intentionally. Mm -hmm. I do think that people will hold you back out of fear and out of love and out of selfishness. Um, so those people want you to stay where you are, or those people are concerned for your safety or they're concerned for, um, that next journey because maybe they're not going to be a part of it. Um, mm -hmm. so I know I've, I've experienced feeling held back, uh, in ways from people that was, it wasn't intentional. Um, it was just out of love, yeah. but, yeah. um, just worries about what I envisioned and what I dreamed and concerned with where I was headed. Um, and mm -hmm. it, it's one thing to voice your concerns if you truly feel like someone is headed down a, a really unhealthy path. Mm -hmm. um, but in my experience specifically, I remember the moment where I wanted to move to Atlanta. Um, I was only 19. I was a freshman. I, nobody else was going to be coming down here with me. I mean, I just, I just wanted to do it. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I remember voicing this desire to my family and I remember getting a lot of pushback from that. Um, mm. why, why do you want to go? Why do you want to leave? You, you're finan you're not financially stable. This isn't going to work. How do you expect this to work? Just a lot of questions that made me second guess what I really wanted. Um, and I, that was a test of faith in my opinion, where I really had to teach myself not to feed into the opinions of others, 
but to feed into what I felt like God was calling me to. I legitimately had to walk by faith. So yeah. I busted my butt to figure out a way to come down here at 19 years old with my stuff, how I was going to attend college without having to pay out of state tuition, how in the world I was going to pay for an apartment. What about a job? What, where am I, where am I going to get a job? All of these things that, that I had to think about. And I remember I busted my butt working at it, call making calls, uh, mm. filling out all these forms, trying out all these different things to make sure I was going to be taken care of. Um, and it, it all worked. It all worked. Everything. Um, I went to school without having to pay out of, out of state tuition. I got an apartment. And when I first moved to Atlanta, I was having a hard time finding a job for the first six months and God still came through. I had little odd jobs here and there. Um, and I was able to pay my rent without a problem. I had my grandparents living here at the time that were helping me out with food when I needed it, when I couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I was just taken care of because I walked by faith and um, stepped away from feeding into other people's opinions. So yeah. had I have listened to that, had I have allowed that to hold me back, I probably would have never moved here. Um, mm -hmm. And I think about that often. So I, I definitely would encourage those who are feeling held back um, that you can't point fingers at the people that you feel like are holding you back because at the end mm -hmm. of the day, you're the one who's going to make the decision on if you're going to be held back or not. Um, so my advice is to feed into your faith, not into the opinions of other people. If you feel like this is something that you are truly, truly meant to do, then step out on faith and do it. If you, if it ends up failing or if it ends up not going the way that you planned, that's okay. Because at the end of the day, everything that's meant to happen, everything that's supposed to happen is meant to happen. Um, mm -hmm. So never feel like you failed. Just always be proud of the fact that you did it. You stepped out in faith. You did not allow anything to hold you back. You did it. You learned. It was an experience one way or the other. And um, to just have faith in that. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I think sometimes people will get it confused and they, I think just because they had a moment of failure meaning means that they are a failure. And that I think it's important to, uh, to, to, to distinguish the two there and, and just um, kind of separate the two, because I think when people step out on faith, like you said, and they, they try something and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And even the things that they're meant to do, they will have moments of failure. Like, Michael Jordan was meant to play basketball, but he had moments of failure, missed 9,000 shots in his career. But just because he had those moments of failure, he knew that he was not a failure and he didn't label him. I think labeling is so important. It's how we describe ourselves is so important. And it's just, um, they were, uh, it's just, I, I heard something in a study was talking about like how a, a negative thought is six times more powerful than a positive thought. And, and we amplify that five times even more than that whenever we say it out loud. So that's, you know, the six, it goes from six times worse to 30 times worse when we say it out loud. So uh, it's, it's, you know, it's important to have faith. It's important to realize that we may have those thoughts of fear that may be kind of, I don't know, sometimes they, they're placed into our minds like a seed inadvertently by family members or people who love us. And they want to see the best for us. So, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, just, I, I love what you said about, you know, just stepping out on faith because I think that is the, that is the biggest way to combat um, your, your, your biggest hurdle, which is fear. And, um, and so that, that really kind of leads me to my, uh, uh, this other question is, or, you know, as we close and it's, what do you feel like, you know, if life is a house um, and how would you feel uh, or what would you say that one of the foundational pieces of the house was one of the foundational pillars of that? Um, I, I'm sure um, maybe faith, you know, along with faith, what would you say would be like a foundational piece of what your house will be built on? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a great question. Um, <clears throat> so many ideas come to mind. I feel like the number one thing for me, in my opinion, would be, it would be ambition. 
-hmm. never ever lose sight of giving up right that's mm -hmm. that's the foundation of ambition you're ambitious to do something you're ambitious to step out and, and get this done um i think if we lose ambition we lose a large part of what life even means in the first place. Um, without ambition, it's hard to chase after something. Without ambition, it's hard to feel dedicated. It's hard to feel um, fulfilled. And yeah, I would definitely say that that, that is the pillar um, for sure. I uh, A couple of times where I felt like I was starting to lose ambition um, and I was starting to question so many things, I just, there was no other solution other than refinding that, right? I mean, mm -hmm. with faith, um, and with God, but being able to refine that and okay, if ambition wasn't coming from this place anymore, then is this a redirect? Do I need to do something else? Do I need to, um, change my ways? Um, mm -hmm. so that, that would be my biggest, biggest advice right there. Definitely ambition. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. That's great. Um, it, it's a ambition is the fuel, uh, for the, for the drive, for the engine, uh, for us to continue on the journey, uh, toward the purpose. So, uh, really appreciate that answer. And uh, so that closed this, that segment. And in the last part is where we we have this thing called question of the day, where we ask a random question. And today's question of the day is, if you wrote a book today about what you learned in 2020, what would it be about? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you can choose one um, thing. I know it's a lot of things, but if you can choose one thing, <laughs> one a lesson. A lot of things, yeah. Um. Wow. I would say, Take your time. I would, I would probably write a book on the necessities of community. Mm -hmm. And when I say that I'm, I'm taught, I'm speaking from a place of yes, physical community, but also having that internal ambition to mm -hmm. want community, to be selfless, to each other, to help each other understand, to meet each other halfway, to work together so that we all can survive, we all can be healthy, we all can achieve. Mm -hmm. um, I've always thought that America specifically has a really terrible rep, rep for being selfish. Um, Mm, it's yeah, we're greedy we're naturally selfish we constantly want and desire more and i'd be a hypocrite if i said that i didn't play a part in that right mm -hmm. um Me too. but at the same time we we have to recognize the importance of community how can we really come together and stop focusing so much on our own selves and our own money and our own uh, success and start really focusing on each other how mm -hmm. can if i if i'm successful how can i help you be successful if if you've, um, if you have the blueprint to achieve mental success, how can you give me that blueprint too? Um, mm -hmm. so I think that community <clears throat> factor is the number one thing that I would want to write about. I think 2020 was, it was a lot happened in 2020. It was tiring. It was exhausting. It was disappointing. It was painful. Um, but at the same time, I don't think I've ever seen so many people come together fighting for the same thing. Um, and it's, I wish I saw more of that, not just mm. over large problematic systemic issues, but smaller ones too. Um, how can you help your neighbor? If you can't help the, the political space, how can you help your neighbor? Um, so yeah, I would definitely write a book about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot to unpack right there, but that's, that's a really great answer because, you know, I think in this Western hemisphere, in this Western society, we uh, we we could take some notes from our eastern counterparts. Um, very communal over there, and uh, it's it's something where we need um, not just for our physical being, and it's it's good for our mental health as well. Uh, we because I think it's good. I, I think it's good to you know be able to stand on your own two feet, but at the same time, you know, there's this African proverb that says, if "You want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together." And it, and that's true because having community allows you to uh, to go farther than you ever could have thought before. Um, just being surrounded by people who may look different or think different and just sharing ideas, sharing life together, sharing culture. And it, it's, and it's, it's beautiful to see that. And we, you know, like you kind of highlighted, we saw moments of that, you know, with uh, the, you know, protests of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Arbery, 
um, things like that, that brought country together that in ways that in 2019 or any time before, I, I mean, I, at least I didn't see that. And maybe, maybe you, you didn't see that either. Uh, but uh, it's just, it's, it's beautiful to see community. Um, it, it's, it's an amazing thing uh, that we have. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, I really, you know, appreciate you being on this podcast and um, uh, really appreciate this conversation. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, anyways, uh, guys, be sure to check out her website and and uh, also uh, she has any uh, she a book a consultation with her today at yourbeautyinthemaking.com and also follow her on Instagram and social media at Angel Marie Official. I'll leave the links below in the comments and you can check that out at any time. And uh, in, anyways, as we close, I just want to say thank you guys again for joining us on today's episode. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to the podcast, whether on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and be sure to leave a review if you connected with anything on today's show. And if you have any questions, comments, or just want to hit us up, find us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Speaker L-Y-F-E, because life without your why is meaningless. And last but not least, podcasts are free to listen to, but are not free to produce. So if you uh, would like to help support the podcast, you can um, click the link below for our Patreon account and become a supporter today. So thank you guys. Love you guys. And we'll see you in the next episode.